Hello out there in the void. It's been a little while since I've spoken with you, but it's just been one of those weeks. So, I didn't get to this as soon as I wanted to. But, here we are. Silent Hill Revelation. This is one of those movies where I had to take notes. Because there's a lot to say about this one. Not all of it to the best. Now I've remembered seeing this one in theaters. I was pretty pumped. I really liked the first one and I was eager to see it. When I first saw it, yeah, sure, I was satisfied. Yeah. Then I picked it up, saw it again. Yeah, still fine. But each subsequent viewing I noticed a little more cracks and flaws in this one and well, it's still an entertaining enough movie, as long as you just put yourself on autopilot for it. This movie's got problems. Particularly when watching it so close after the original. Okay, so... Where do I begin? So, uh, this one picks up, uh... An un about eight years after the last one, seven, eight years, something like that. So, at the end of the last one, spoilers for Silent Hill, if you're, if you're watching this one, you, I hope you would have seen that movie already. It ended with Rose trapped in Silent Hill, along with, but reunited with her daughter, and they were just chilling out in a Fog World version of Sean Bean's apartment. This one opens with uh, Heather, which is Sharon, Sharon in the, from the first movie, the little girl, using an alias. So she's now known by Alyssa, Sharon, and Heather. Supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain, but so it's Heather. And now she's back in the real world and hanging out with her father, Sean B. Who now goes by Harry Mason. Now, if you're paying attention, Harry Mason is the protagonist of the first Silent Hill. And Heather Mason is the protagonist of Silent Hill 3. So they're finding an excuse to retcon the original names of it. Now, in the games, Harry went looking for, then lost his daughter in Silent Hill, and she ended up being reborn. Hence why he renamed her. This one, he's taken a new name because he's trying to dodge the cops and the cult and reasons that are convoluted as hell. Apparently the director just wanted to get this back closer to the tracks of the game and the continuity has suffered because of it. Anyway, so this one pretty much is, to my knowledge, a do-up of Silent Hill 3. I've only played the beginning of that game, so I can't say for certain, but there's some familiarity there. So, anyway, uh, Heather wakes up uh, and is dreaming about some sort of dark carnival, sees a bunch of murder mayhem, wakes up, and she's in a new town and is going to a new school. From there, she keeps almost phasing into Silent Hill, which is an inconvenience, and it only gets worse once Sean Bean gets kidnapped by cultists who want to bring her back to Silent Hill. And so she, with a, another student she just met, who's also a new kid, go on a whirlwind adventure out towards Silent Hill. Okay. So, first off, you have Sean Bean again. Most characters reprise their roles, with the exception of uh, the actress for Sharon who is now Heather. All right, so Sean Bean's back. And again, you don't kill off Sean Bean in the horror movie, I guess. I mean, they killed him in a fake-off dream sequence, so I guess they're kind of cheating there a little. Okay, we got our Sean Bean death out of the way. Sort of enough. Okay. This one does have the benefit of adding Malcolm McDowell to the mix, which 
He's always going to be seen chewingly amazing in a horror film, so I always say bring on Malcolm McDowell. Okay, so problems. Let's see. First off, let's go on some technical aspects here. Pacing is kind of a nightmare here, particularly at the beginning. You go from boom, fake out dream sequence, uh, the nightmare to fake out dream sequence to exposition to new school to running for our lives, all very boom, 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 boom. Now, the original Silent Hill was a longer movie, so it didn't have this problem. But this thing seems like things happen really quick, particularly since they're trying to shoehorn a romance in there on top of this, so. It's a bit strained there. Next off, a lot of times, the visuals just look weird. And I can't even really explain it. Things just look off, and I don't think in the way they're trying to. Particularly at the beginning, and when they're going into the dark areas of Silent Hill, it's... It just... The way it's shot just seems strange. It looks almost like it should be a video game cutscene, but it's not. It's weird. I can't really explain it. Now, this movie was shot for 3D. And now, I commented the Resident Evil, uh, the last one I saw, Afterlife. That one was shot for 3D, too. But it was done more or less sparingly, and every once in a while they do something. This one, they're just throwing shit constantly, and it's distracting. Okay, so, issues along the way here. Now, first, uh, let's start with uh, The Order. Now, in the first movie, they were this cult that was trying to burn the witch and restore innocence and purity to the town and burn Alessa. Because she is sin. This one, they both... It's kind of back and forth on what the cult is supposed to be doing. Now, it's supposed to be the same cult, but it doesn't feel like the same cult. Now, originally I think he wanted it to be a different cult, but uh, they, he also wanted to keep continuity, so he tried to have it both ways, and it kind of failed. Okay, so the order, they gave it a name, I can't even remember it. So first off, they are getting out of Silent Hill, because now they can, but only through great pain, sacrifice, and shenanigans. So I guess if it's the only one that's really convenient. So not just the, de the demon decides who comes and goes, like they made it a very strong point in the first one. This one is just, if you try hard enough, yeah, we can just leave. So why doesn't... So if the whole goal is to do that, why doesn't everyone just take the punishment and get out? Anyway. So... Before they... Like I said, were wanting to burn Alessa. This one, they're trying to bring Heather back to... Okay, this is where it kind of gets back and forth. So now it's the cult's overall goal is to to birth their god into the world. Which, apparently, Alessa was sin in the last one, but now, apparently, they burned her because she's the only one who could survive being burned to give birth to someone who could give birth to the god, so... But they barely touch on that. They just go into it a little bit, and then they're back to just wanting to get rid of Alessa. Because she's the demon who's tormenting them and keeping them all trapped. So it's two different things at once, but never enough of each, so you can't... It's mostly still just the original thing, but they keep sprinkling in something else that they keep almost forming an idea of. Also, where did these guys come from? What last we saw, it was pretty much the entire order getting massacred. So I guess there's some left. Why are they wiped out? Because the demon could get into their sanctuaries? I guess they have a new sanctuary now. Cool. 
so this new this new faction of the order is run by Claudia Wolf, who is now the last movie it was run by a woman named Christabella, who we see get eviscerated. Now this now she is the sister of Christabella. Christabella already had a sister in the first movie, Dahlia, which was the mother of Alessa. Dahlia Gillespie, they actually, she had a full name. This is Claudia Wolf. I guess she married, maybe? But otherwise, it doesn't really... It seems like they're trying to shoehorn a connection in there. This could have just been another cult leader without having to be Christabella's sister. Okay, so the cult back and forth is they're just there because but they were there the first time so yeah let's just bring them back and now they're running around the dark aspects of Silent Hill which they were completely fleeing before but now they're running into them without really concern they kind of sort of say that the darkness is just expanding and is more encompassing now so they just have to deal with it but at the same time they're just going about the darkness just fine without being attacked unless they some of them, if they, they have to have a breathing apparatus, I guess, but otherwise, eh. A couple of them are even just turning into monsters, which makes little sense compared to what the cult was supposed to be for, but the monsters are supposed to be the manifestations of Alessa's power and, and how people got disfigured after she twisted them. Or her fears of them. Now, both Claudia and Malcolm McDowell, Leonard, I think his name was in this, just turn into monsters, just just cause. I don't know. So, that's an issue. The fog world. One, it's barely present. Two, it look again it looks weird. The first one, it was fine. It looked great. It looked creepy. This one, it looks like there's just a CG effect is just put on the seat of the thing, and rather than just the little bits of ash falling, it looks like these weird random chunks are coming down. It's, it doesn't look good. Another issue, getting confused on, Harry Mason. Admittedly, he was such a minor role in the last movie, I can't even remember what his name was in that one. But here. Okay, so the last movie, all he did was learn a little bit about the history of, the real world history of Silent Hill. And the fact that Rose disappeared with the daughter was disturbing to him, and he was doing all he could to find them and get them back. But he never encountered anything supernatural other than some calls from Silent Hill, which just manifested as static. So in this, okay, I can I can wrap my head around Rose appearing to him in a mirror and say, "Here, I found a, that I'm trapped, but here I found a way to get uh, then get our daughter Sharon back out, take care of her." Okay, sure, fine, I'm okay with that. But when he goes missing, and he's been keeping all this cult shenanigans from her, so now he knows all about the cult. No idea how he knows. I guess Rose vaguely said that they're going to be after her. But now he seems to know everything about them. Maybe, I mean, maybe he did some research, because apparently this cult has always been in power there. Or something. But he has a notebook that, when he goes missing, Heather finds the notebook. And he's using that to get up to speed, because she doesn't remember the events when she was a kid. How the hell does Harry, who never went to Silent Hill, never encountered any of this, have detailed notes on who Pyramid Head is, all these pictures of monsters that are there, symbols for the Order, bits of the seal... How do you know all this? Why do you know this? Why does it even need to be a notebook? This could be stuff that the character has encountered along the way. It's a completely pointless little addition.
Okay. So, another thing, continuity-wise, is them wanting to bring Heather back to so she can become one with Alessa so they can kill the demon. Because she can't be killed while she's separated like this. Now, at the end of Silent Hill, the first Silent Hill, there's a very clear scene of Dark Alessa crawling up to little Sharon, looking her right in the eyes, smiling, and then vanishing, seeming to go into her. So, aren't they already one? The town seemed to chill after that, and they just left. So, they're completely ignoring that. And it was a very pointed scene. They drew attention to this. This was a big focal scene. You could not miss this. Also, they seem to be completely going back on and forth of what Dark Alessa is. And then, in the first movie, she actually had a whole spiel of, I have many names. I, then, but right now, I'm the dark part of Alessa. Which seems to indicate she's some sort of demonic entity, and even in separate from and apart, while well, a part of and more than Alessa. This one, it's just um, they just seem to make it as the darkness in Alessa, which seems to have very little ability other than just chilling out in the darkness. Also, when she manifests as uh, dark Heather, I guess she just looks like ridiculous. It looks like a goth girl, just someone who's walked out of Hot Topic. Which, another problem I had is a bit during the climax, when Heather faces Dark, uh, faces, is Dark Alessa. They pretty much have a bat, uh, the, the way they face each other off is pretty much a hug off. I'm sorry, I'm not kidding, they pretty much embrace, uh, they, they yell at each other for a moment, and then, uh, one does like an I am you and wraps her arms around her and they pretty much have a hug fight. Where it keeps going back and forth. Like one shifts dark, the other shifts light, goes back and forth, and then they eventually merge. But it goes for a while of them just hugging it out on a horror movie carousel with meat animals and people bound to it. While well, Pyramid Head sits in the middle, spinning the thing. It is a ridiculous looking scene. This is some silly, silly shit. Despite all that, I still kind of enjoyed the film. It's silly, nonsensical. If you just kind of autopilot through it, it's still got some cool visuals. There, there is. The monster designs are still fun. Particularly the mannequin spider thing. That thing is creepy as hell. And despite it being CG, it looks good. And a lot of the effects in this movie otherwise aren't bad, other than when it goes like CG 3D effects at your face. Like when someone gets their fingers severed and they come flying at you. Okay, yeah, that looks stupid. But, otherwise, the gore effects are great. But there's a lot of practical effects here. They all look good. But when the world itself just looks a little off, it kind of detracts from that. And there's some very creepy imagery about, particularly around the carnival or this birthday party freakout scene, kind of in the in the mall in the in the right towards the beginning. So there's some cool stuff here. The best I can give this movie is a low. Th Three MacGuffins. It's worth seeing, but it doesn't really hold a candle to the first one, and it was an attempt, but nah, this one didn't really get there. But it is still entertaining enough that I wasn't bored during it, and I now these complaints are really making me mad. It's just like, you know, shrug, okay, I guess I guess that now. And like the hug off scene is like, okay, this is silly. But it's it was still entertaining to watch. I will say Pyramid Head having a uh, having a 
Freddy versus Jason moment with the whatever buzzsaw monster from this one. It's like, it was cool. No, I'm not gonna lie. Just him interceding uh, in that fight. It was a, it was a fun scene. So it does enough to bring it to keep itself right in the median, but on the lower end. Three McGuffins. All right. So yeah, I got more Resident Evil coming up because of course I do. Have a good night.